Welcome Hillsong Church! Come on, can we start tonight with a mighty shout of praise to King Jesus? Can we lift the roof up? Give God the glory He deserves! Amen! Come on, you know the song. If 
Thank you, Jesus. to lead our church in worship. Could you please welcome Kim Walker-Smith. And uh, as she leads us and as we continue to worship throughout tonight, let's just open our hearts to all that God has for us and expect miracles, expect God to really reach down and transform lives and fill our hearts and fill us with His Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we say amen?
Sing that again. If you want. doubt God is doing something in the place and the Holy Spirit's moving and uh, it's just so good that you happen to be at Hillsong Church. A big warm welcome to Hillsong Church. Uh, My name's Peter Toggs. I'm one of the pastors here and it is just so good that you're here and it's also good to have a guest worship leader with us, Kim, who I know was introduced before but so cool to have you here, Kim. We love you and uh, Kim Walker-Smith from Jesus Culture. She'll be leading us later on in the uh, service. So it's gonna be absolutely amazing. But hey, you're in the right place at the right time. God wants to move. God wants to speak to you tonight, whether you're online, whether in this meeting right here. Do you know God wants to encounter you more than you want to encounter Him? God wants to meet you where you're at. And you know, in my hands right now, I have many different needs, so many things from people needing provision to visas to God's favour from health to finances and relationships, so many different needs. But even today uh, on Australia Day, where we consider Australia, we're gonna pray for our nation as well. Uh, We love our nation, we love our landscape, we love its people. And so we are gonna pray to that end. We still need these bushfires to come to a complete stop. We need to believe for water and the rains to come. And so we're gonna lift up our nation. So when we pray right now for these prayer requests, we're also gonna pray for our nation and, also mindful of the outbreak of the coronavirus as well. So look, many different needs, many behind me on the screens. Come on, we're a praying church that believes in a God answers prayer. Would you stretch out your hands? Come on, let's believe for God to turn around situations. Father, we thank You, God. Lord, You do turn around the worst of situations. And so right now we bring every individual need towards You, God. 
Lord, we thank You that You can heal, You can provide, You can restore, God. Lord, You can take things that are dead, God, and You can bring life, God. And so we speak over businesses, we speak over marriages, we speak over hospital rooms right now, God. Healing in Jesus' Name, favour, God. Lord, we love our nation, Australia, God. And Lord, right now, we lift up the nation of Australia, the great Southland of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we know You love our people, it's people, God. And so God, we believe for restoration. Lord, we believe for healing, God. Lord, we believe for these bushfires to come to a complete stop. And Lord, would You keep sending the rain to where it needs to get to, God. We believe right now for an outpouring of Your Spirit like never before. Come on, church, from the front to the back. Let's sing this out. Come on. If you want my heart, I won't say again. Cause I need your love more than anything. That's it, sing it out. of praise for what He is doing in the lives of His people. As I said, a big warm welcome, especially those of you who are new visiting, maybe checking out church and uh, kind of considering what you're doing this year when it comes to being planted in a home. And listen, I got to tell you right now, Hillsong Church is the place to be. We want you to feel right at home, feel like you belong. And uh, we've got an incredible kids ministry. We have an incredible youth ministry with an incredible youth pastor. And um, just, just putting it out there. But hey, more than that, we would love to meet you. And uh, after the service, there's always things going on. We have like a big food banquet. We have a cafe out here. Uh, we've got things going on and the food has no calories in it as well. I don't know. It's just this special thing that, you know, it's going on. But hey, we, we do all that because we want to connect with people. We connect with God, but we also believe in connecting with people. So please come and have a conversation and uh, it'd be awesome to meet you. But why don't you take a moment right now and say hello to someone as you grab your seats. Give him a good long 10 second hug. One of those awkward ones, you know. As you grab your seats, I'm gonna let you know of some praise reports. So good. Was anyone at Young Adult Summer Fest this week? What an amazing time we had together. So many great praise reports, but I like this one. Praising God that after years of being on a permanent residence visa, her husband will receive his Australian citizenship today. How cool is that? So cool. And uh, someone here is thanking God uh, for providing help and contacts for family after fire. And so that's pretty cool that God's sending help their way, praising God for His blessing over her children and their commitment to His way and guidance. I would be praising God if my children were doing that as well. So that's absolutely amazing. 
So many great things. This is cool. Last week, someone here praising God for receiving the power of the Holy Spirit and the gift of speaking in tongues uh, last Sunday night. So that's awesome. Pastor Brian has been really inputting into our church when it comes to the Holy Spirit and believing for a move of the Holy Spirit like never before. So it's really cool. Hey, another praise report. Just wanna thank every family, every uh, person that sent their young people to kids camps, summer camps, high school camps and young adult summer fest. Uh, We just wanted to give you a shout out, believing that you're gonna see miracles in your home. They're gonna be cleaning their rooms, washing the dishes, doing as they're told. But hey, just a little glimpse of what took place this year and a thank you to our entire church. Check out the screens of what took place. Church. I'm here at All Stars Day Camp, just one of our many kids camps that have happened across the country. For everyone who registered a child or sponsored a child, we just want to say a big thank you. There is nothing like seeing kids encountering God in such an amazing environment full of friendship and fun. Thank you so much. What's happening Hillsong Church? We are here right now at summer camps and it has been an amazing few days, hasn't it guys? We just wanna thank every parent for sending their young people along. I tell you what, God has turned up, radically changed young people's lives. Summerfest was absolutely amazing with our young adults, powerhouse and frontline and right across Australia and Bali. And I can't wait to see the generational impact this is gonna be. Just can't thank our church enough. So come on, let's thank all our youth volunteers, youth pastors, kids leaders, kids volunteers. Grateful for you guys. And so if you knew, we have uh, programs throughout the week uh, for kids and uh, youth on Friday nights. And so we'd love you to be a part of it. Send your young people along and God will move in their life. All right, we're gonna continue in our worship and come around our giving. And so you're gonna, you, you, you can uh, go ahead and begin to prepare for that. Ways behind me on the screen, the app's actually a really cool way. And uh, I want you just to think about the part that you play and the team's gonna worship just in a moment as we consider our tithes and our offering. If you're new or visiting in this place, uh, absolutely no pressure. But those of you who call Hillsong Church home, you know what to do. You can begin to prepare. There's an envelope and I love this verse on it. 2 Corinthians 9.8, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. That's a great promise right there. The team are gonna lead us in worship and the host can begin to get ready. And as they worship, Pastor Brian's faith decree. I think it's a good reminder for all of us. Let's, uh, you can read that, consider your part, but thanks team, why don't you lead us as we just think about our part and what this year holds for us, go for it. Father, we thank You for a people that put You first, week in, week out. God, I thank You, God, for families, marriages, individuals, God, Lord, that bring their first fruit, Lord, their tithe and their generosity. We thank You for what we're a part of. And I pray that You'd bless every person that gives today. In Jesus' Name I pray, Amen, Amen. Thank you, beautiful hosts. You can begin to serve us. Yeah, yeah, come on, give it up for the hosts. We put these guys through boot camp to get on the team, all right? Just so you know, these guys are some of the most agile, fittest people you've ever seen in your life. You know I'm joking, right? Okay. No, you don't know I'm joking. I am joking, right? Oh man. Stop talking nonsense, Doxy. Okay. Check out the screens. Church news. All that's coming up in church life. Leave the date. 
Vision Sunday is only three weeks away and uh, this is an exciting time to be alive at Hillsong Church. I gotta tell you right now, Vision Sunday, three weeks away, put it in your diary. Uh, this is a special weekend where our senior pastors, Brian, Pastor Brian and Bobby Houston, uh, get to express their heart and Sunday morning of Vision Sunday, we get to be a part of a short film presentation uh, where we give expression to that ongoing vision of Hillsong Church and it's so exciting, it's captivating. It's really captivating what takes place. And then Sunday night, we're gonna celebrate with baptisms and it's a revival night. And uh, then Tuesday, we roll out this global ongoing amazing vision and we kind of look at it locally and what that looks like practically in our church. So it's a really exciting time. Uh, You don't wanna miss it. Hey, a big warm welcome back to any returning Hillsong College students, by the way. All right, so cool. We've missed you guys. We've missed you guys and so it's so good you're back. And special warm welcome for those of you who are here uh, and you are about to start college uh, for the first time. Is there anyone like that by any chance? All right, all right, anyone else? Welcome, really cool. And uh, college is a great place to meet people, fall in love and uh, it's already sorted, yeah. So good, but hey, College is about to begin, but hey, our own young people, our own Australian uh, young people, you know, we wanna make sure that nobody misses out on building biblical foundations in their life. And it's not too late to be a part of college, but we're making it easy for you. If finance is, um, you know, an obstacle for you, uh, we've got, payment plans for our Australian students who wanna be a part of it. So, hey, come and have a conversation with the college uh, guys and we'd love to try and make a way for you, all right? Well, we're blessed tonight. Uh, it's Like I said, it's been an incredible week at Young Adult Summer Fest and no doubt Kim Walker-Smith has been amazing. But also uh, a young couple who I think are some of the most incredible people in the world, the most genuine, authentic people you'll ever meet. And this couple, uh, they have, um, planted a church in Canada, in Ottawa, and it's doing so well. They started from scratch in their lounge room and God's doing amazing things. And Levi and Nadia Mary Church have been an incredible blessing to our church. They're a great gifted young couple and you're gonna love Levi tonight. He's gonna come and bring the Word. So come on, let's stand. Let's really, really give a good, warm Hillsong welcome as Levi Mary Church comes to bring the Word. Amen, thank you. Grab a seat, please. And I thank the team as they grab a seat also. Brilliant, just wonderful. Thank you so much. Hey, look, as you grab out your Bible tonight, turn with me to the book of Judges. And and can I just uh, reiterate what what Peter was saying just a minute ago? Uh, Vision Sunday, it's, it's not just a day that you should keep in your calendar. It is an absolute must attend Sunday in the life of what? Dare I say, our church, I'm family. Because if you're not there, you're gonna, you're gonna be out of the loop. Your church is probably launching a campus on Mars this year. <laughs> and I don't think that you wanna miss that. It's a great honour to be here tonight and to be speaking to you. I wanna talk to you tonight, I guess, in the theme of what Pastor Brian has been speaking on over the last few weeks, theme of the Holy Spirit. And the message I wanna talk to you tonight is entitled, and you can write this down, God Awareness. God awareness tonight. In the book of Judges, chapter 16 and verse number one, it says this. One day Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. And so they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night saying at dawn, we will kill him. Verse 18 for time's sake says this. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, She sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, come back once more, he has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him and his strength left him. Verse 20 says this, when she called Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before, and shake myself free, but note this tonight. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. 
Verse 21 says, Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes and took him down to Gaza, binding him with bronze shackles. They set him to grinding grain in the prison, but the hair on his head began to grow back after it had been shaved. And the book of Luke chapter three and verse 22 says this, And the Holy Spirit descended on him, speaking of Jesus, in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love with you, I am well pleased. Let's pray tonight. Father, we love you, love your presence, love church, love being together. Father, tonight we love your word. It's the only book that as we read it, it reads us. We pray tonight, read us, speak to us, we ask in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Been a great honour this week with my wife Nadia to speak at Summerfest here and in Queensland. And it's been, a, it's been a, a particular honour and a privilege to hang out with Peter and Laura Toggs. One of the great things about, about Peter is that there's two of him. There's Peter and then there's Togsy. <laughs> I mean, he's self-professed tonight, shouted out himself, stop talking nonsense, Togsy. <laughs> he's the joyful, effervescent, charismatic, loves to clown around and have a great time, Togsy. But Young and Free is not what it is just because of Togsy. It's what it is also because of Peter. Peter's the fearless leader. He's the one that drives us forward. The one that behind closed doors is making sure that registrations are good, young people are safe, everyone gets home, venues are looked after and everything is kept in good order. There's Peter and there's Togsy. We laugh because it's true. We also laugh because we can relate. There's two of us as well. There's, there's two halves of us that keep us together. There's the half that we are and the half that we're trained in, the half that we know we're trying to become, but there's the half that we're born. Like when you look at me, for instance, and you see athlete. <laughs> but I'm not just an athlete. I'm also a closet nerd. I've read four books this year already. First John, Second John, Third John, <laughs> and the book of Philemon. No, no, it's true, no, it's true. I haven't read those books. But I have in fact read four books this year already. I love a good debate. I love a good conversation. I love to read a good novel. I, I, I love to get involved in the nuances of the language that we speak, the English vernacular. I love to find out the quirks of the nature of the language that we speak. For instance, it's nothing like a good cliche, like this. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like I should hope not. Like I should hope this is more than a cliche, but something we actually literally believe. <laughs> Let's get down to brass tacks. Keep your ear to the ground. Let's not beat around the bush. We have these weird phrases and we don't know where they come from. It's a rule of thumb. We're not sure what it means. Another one that I love is this phrase, read the room. We like that phrase because it's a nice way to say to someone, don't be silly like you just were when you walked in. Have an awareness and an understanding that your off-colour jokes aren't funny here tonight. <laughs> Read the room. Read the room is a phrase that's about awareness. It's a phrase that's about self-awareness because there's nothing worse than someone that stands too close. <laughs> like if you're that person, I pray tonight that the Lord speaketh to you, yea, verily unto thee. <laughs> Bible length apart is a safe distance. We don't wanna feel your breath and smell it all at the same time. I just think a safe distance. They inch closer, subconsciously, I think. We inch backwards. The conversation started at the coffee machine and ends up at the front door. <laughs> self-awareness is good, but we don't read the Bible necessarily just for self-awareness. We don't read about Samson necessarily just because of self-awareness. If self-awareness is good, we can learn from the story that God-awareness is just much better. Every generation, every era, every age, and indeed the canon of Scripture has the strong man. Marvel has the Hulk. We have Samson. It might come as a shock to you, but I can't relate to Samson on a strength level. I can't relate to Samson on a strength level, but I can relate to Samson on a source level. And by source, I mean S-O-U-R-C-E because he gets his strength where I get my strength from, where you get your strength from. 
from the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. I can't relate to Him on a strength level, but I can relate to Him on a source level. You and me, without the Holy Spirit as our source, how can we live this life that God has called us to live? How can I be kind without Him? How can I have peace without Him? How can I love without Him? He is our secret source of strength. And we had this man whose name is Samson who was used to doing damage for Jesus. This one time, he defeated a thousand Philistines with the donkey's jawbone. I think he did it as a joke because surely if there's a donkey carcass there, there's, and the femur would be, a good, would be a good weapon, but a jawbone, that, how do you even, what are you throwing teeth at people? I'm not sure <laughs> what he's doing there, but, but he took down a thousand Philistines. This man was used to having the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit in his life, the anointing that manifests presence of God. And he gets up one day, he's in the wrong place at the wrong time. This man has been making some bad decisions with his life. And he gets up and he's so unaware that he doesn't realise that his head has been shaved clean. Like, I just think if over time you go bald, I think that's different. (laughs) But I think if you have hair and then wake up and have no hair and don't realise, I think we need to have a conversation about what's been happening in your life. And he says, oh, he says this. And I think this is a religious expectation that we need to watch out for and the motions in our life that can lack meaning. He says this, I'll go as before and shake myself free. In other words, he says, I'll just keep doing what I've been doing. Ah, oh, no big dramas. New year, new hair, whatever. I'll just keep doing it, no problem. And he doesn't realise that the Lord had left him. I'm not talking about the salvation presence of God. I'm not talking about the salvation, the salvation presence of Jesus in our life. I'm talking about the indwelling manifest power of God. Bill Johnson, a few years ago, preached a message based on the Scripture that I read second tonight from the book of Luke chapter 3, verse 22, which is a powerful Scripture. And it says this, The Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in bodily form in the form of a dove. And the voice came from heaven that said, You are my Son whom I love. You are well pleased. This, my friends, is a powerful illustration because it's one of the only moments in all of the canon of Scripture that we see all three members of the Godhead present at the same time. Jesus being baptised, God the Father speaking, and the Holy Spirit present in the bodily form of a dove. If you still use Microsoft Word, this is the bolded, underlined, and italicised moment (laughs) in Scripture. I would have loved to have been a part of the brainstorm of this moment because I'm not sure I would have chosen a dove. I don't like birds. (laughs) I'm not saying I'm afraid of birds. I'm saying they're afraid of me. (laughs) Because you have in that moment really like limitless creativity. Like if we were there with God, hey God, He's like, hey guys, thinking about sending the Holy Spirit in bodily form at Jesus' baptism. I think the whole family should be there. (laughs) I, I would say, that's, that's a great thought. What are you thinking? He's like, oh, I was keen for your thoughts, but my initial feedback was a dove. <laughs> I would say I'm not sure about that. Really, we've got limitless creativity here, God. What about a unicorn? <laughs> what about Smaug the dragon? What about a griffin? We could really do just about anything. But if, you, if, you, if you're thinking dove, hey, I'm, I'm on board. Heart and soul, I'm with you. If dove's what you're thinking, let's go with the dove. I mean, sure, it's a weak bird that doesn't really achieve much and <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit strange. But if that's what you're thinking, I'm with you. That's all good. And so the brainstorm finished and the dove was sent. Bill Johnson in the sermon posed a question. He said this, I'm yet to find in Scripture, I wonder if you could find in Scripture where the dove leaves Jesus. So I furiously read the Bible cover to cover, trying to find a moment in the Scriptures where that dove left. And friends, I couldn't find it. I'm not proposing to us today that Jesus was that quirky guy walking around with a parrot. I'm not saying that. (laughs) I'm, I'm, I'm not saying Jesus was akin to the Home Alone 2 Central Park woman. I'm not saying that. I'm I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that. At at the Summerfest, Queensland um, 
conference, summer fest, gathering in an outdoor tent, very hot. <laughs> I was staying at a place that was a bungalow room that you would get to through a boardwalk, walking through a jungle. But it was like, it was, you know, it was like a place. It wasn't like they dropped me off on the side of the road. I'm giving you the, it's like, we haven't got much time to go into all the details apart from this. They dropped me off at night time. So I get there at night time and I'd already checked in, been to my room, but when I get back at night time, it's dark. And I'm walking to my room on the boardwalk through the jungle and I'm a New Zealander who's moved to Canada to start a church. Let me tell you why that's important. Nothing in New Zealand can kill you apart from the people. So the animals are not dangerous. <laughs> like the, the kiwi is not a dangerous animal that you look out for. I then moved to Canada where nothing much can kill you apart from animals that let you know they're coming. Like a moose. I don't know if you've ever seen a moose. It's 10 foot high. So you're like, whoa, that's a 10 foot moose. We should avoid it, right? <laughs> there's a bear, run. Or oh, there's different ways of dealing with bears, but we won't go into the details, but at least they, <laughs> at, at least they announce their arrival. Not in Australia. You can stand on death just like that. There's venom at every corner. I'm walking through the boardwalk, through the jungle at night, and my, 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 like I'm, everything is heightened. I can hear all kinds of rattlesnakes in the bush. <laughs> and I kid you not, out of the corner of my eye, whilst walking through the boardwalk in this jungle at night to get to my bungalow room, I'm on my phone, and I can see on the handrail at eye level, what looked to me like an Australian turkey. <laughs> and I don't know if it's venomous, but I didn't want to stick around to ask. <laughs> but you know, it was crazy. I freaked out, which in and of itself is crazy. But the bird took off, went to tell his friends about me. <laughs> I say all of that to say this. It's difficult to keep a bird calm because birds are very cautious. In fact, if there was a bird in the room right now, it would be freaked out. It would be hard to catch that bird and let that bird be still. Let's use this analogy and bring it back to Jesus, who God in our brainstorm, despite our pushback, decided to still use that dove and land on the shoulder of Jesus, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. Do you remember Noah? Solid guy. <laughs> 40 days of flooding, waters begin to dissipate. What does Noah do? What does Noah choose? He chooses a dove. Sends the dove, dove flies out, comes back, flies out, comes back. Third time comes back with an olive branch. Interesting choice of branch. Universally recognised as a symbol of peace. That the Holy Spirit is a picture of peace in our life but at the same time, I think, is a picture of something that's looking for peace. I've never tried to walk around with a bird on my shoulder. I don't think we should try. <laughs> but imagine for a second that we did. Imagine how careful you would walk. Imagine what things you wouldn't say. Imagine what places you wouldn't go if you had a bird that represented the infilling of the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. What conversations you wouldn't have, what movies you wouldn't watch, what music you wouldn't listen to. That dove brings peace, but I do believe that dove, my friends, is looking for peace. And Samson woke up and didn't know that the dove had left him. And he thought he could break those chains like before. And his life was altered in that moment. If you're taking notes tonight, friend, I would like us in this new year to figure out how we as a family can stay God aware. And if you're taking notes, would you write this down? We need to, if we are gonna do that, we need to value our relationship with God. We value the strangest things. We value the most brilliant things. We value gold and jewellery and clothes and fashion, but at that same time, we value relationships and family and friends. I value my wife, Nadia. In fact, I value her so much that when I was at university studying law, I worked three jobs to pay for a ring that would embody my love for her. It's funny we do that. Uh, on the proposal night, I'd, I'd worked the whole day to make sure that she had all these gifts, but still no idea what was happening. 
romance, my friends, was a brew. That evening, I booked the movie theatre out and paid for every seat. It was just her and I watching her favourite movie, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. (laughs) Movie finished, credits began to roll. I got down on one knee and I proposed to my best friend. She said, yes, we would get married and my life would be changed forever. It would be remiss of me though to hang my hat on that moment and think that that moment of great value that I showed to her would be enough to last a lifetime of marriage. For me to get two years in and treat her poorly, but say, honey, I treat you badly, but I did a great thing for you that time on that night, remember? The marriage would be very rocky. There would be some difficult and tricky conversations that we would have and many nights sleeping on the couch. But instead of that, in my maturity and my wisdom, I realised that when you value something, you must remind what you value all the time that indeed you value it. I love my kids. I'm sure if they were here, they would tell you that. But every week I'm thinking, in the wintertime in Canada, how often can I get them up the slopes, get them skiing and snowboarding, get them enjoying their time? How, How quickly can I get them their pocket money so they know that their hard work is being invested back into their lives? How how much can I make sure that through my actions, I'm showing my kids and my family that I value them? In the same way, through my actions, how can I show God that I value Him? Oh, I remember when I got saved. Oh man, changed my life. But I can't just hark back to that moment and let that be the only moment I hang my hat on in my relationship with God, that He's a stranger after 10 years. And I say, no, we caught up that one time. I don't wanna get to the pearly gates and be waving at Jesus. My name's not in the book, someone twinked it out. But hey, remember, I'm the guy from way back when. But our relationship with Him should be ongoing. It should be about a continual relationship where we value and invest and spend time in His presence. Facebook, oh, Zuckerberg. These guys are genius. Algorithms, I mean, they know human nature better than we do. This is why on your Facebook page, anniversaries come up because they know it's in human nature to remind yourself of the good things that you've done in your life. So then you click on it and go back and you remember, then you text your friends, remember that time, how good. Oh, anniversary this week, hey, love you, you know, happy birthday. And they collect all these good memories and they bring them and they remind us. Remember the Old Testament? Remember when they walked across the Jordan River and they would step in the water and, and, and it, would, it would be dry and the, and, the, and the water would dissipate and they would walk across on dry land? But they didn't wanna forget it, but they had an oral history. So they, what are they gonna write it on? And so they would gather rocks and they would make a monument to God so that another generation would walk and trip up on the rocks and see, oh, choice, that's a pile of rocks. (laughs) And they would stop and read and remember the great things that God has done in their life. That's why on Spotify, I've got an old school bangers playlist. (laughs) Praise and worship bangers. songs from long ago that remind me of moments in my life where God has moved. We celebrate summer camps for the kids, the teenagers and the young adults, not just because it's a great idea, but because they're creating memories, creating moments. And it's that song. For every songwriter out there, keep writing, please. Because you you add a fingerprint to a moment that allows us through melody and harmony to remember that moment so that we can go back and not just hang our hat on one moment, but on many moments. Value your relationship with God. If you're taking notes, not just value, but can I encourage us tonight to not just value our relationship with God, but to protect it. I'm cautious of this microphone. Let me tell you why. It's probably quite expensive. You know why I know that? Because it's heavy. My arm is sore, but I don't wanna drop it. Because if I drop it, it might break. This microphone, guarantee you this. This Hillsong Church is smart, good stewards. 100% guarantee you this. Side of stage, there's a case for this microphone. Oh, no doubt about it. There'll be a case for this amp. I don't know what kind of thing this is. Looks like the Death Star over here. (laughs) That's a Mac 3, that's what that is. Without a shadow of a doubt, without without a shadow of a doubt, there is a case that might even be, even be more expensive than the light that protects that light. 
Because you've got to be careful for the youth ministry, uh, for the for the ministries in the church, for the ministries in the church. Because you got you got the you got the GM, you got the insurances, and you got the policies to make sure that we don't want to invest in a light that's going to break, so we keep it in a case. Your brain is in your head. <laughs> the ring was in a box. Your heart is in your ribs. You live in a house, your car's in a garage. Baby's in a crib. We protect the things that we love. We look after the things that we love. The Larry O'Brien trophy, if it was on this table, it'd be about this high. I'm not sure what it's made out of, but it looks like gold. It's the trophy that every NBA basketball team is trying to capture this year. Uh, yeah, we're, yeah, crazy. It's funny I bring that up actually because the, the, the Larry O'Brien trophy is in Canada right now. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm loath to bring it up, but the Toronto Raptors own that trophy. Now, here's the crazy thing. Before I moved to Canada, they had never won a championship. <laughs> Don't you find that bizarre? And an absolute coincidence. For 27 years, they tried to win that trophy and didn't come close, not one time. Then I moved there. And what was crazy was that once I moved there, they won the trophy. I'm not saying that I had a part to play in the winning of the trophy or my wife and kids. I'm just presenting the facts to you. I'll let you decide. Because here's what's crazy. For 27 years, they tried. And of all the time that I've been in Canada, there's only been one basketball season. Therefore, there's only been one chance to win that trophy. Therefore, they have won all the trophies available to them since I've been in Canada. Again, I present the facts to you. Here's what's crazy. Mathematically, they have won infinitely more championships since I've been there than before I came. Again, I simply present the facts to you. I'll let you decide. The NBA has just done a collaboration with Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton has built a case to encase the trophy. I wonder, friends, what's more valuable, the trophy or the case? I reckon they'll build a case for the case, <laughs> just in case. That's what I think. In life, what we value, we protect. You'll have a far better job of protecting your relationship with God when you are well rested when you have sleep, when you exercise, when you make good decisions, when you have the right influences in your life and when you work on your character in the private place. You'll have a far better chance of protecting your relationship with Jesus. Value it, protect it. But maybe as the keyboardist comes tonight, let me encourage us, share your relationship with God. One of the funny things about New Zealanders and Australians alike, where we come together as Anzacs, is in our answer to this question, how are you? We'll say this, yeah, not bad. What does that mean, not bad? If this is bad and that's good, all I'm saying is I'm just not that. Young people, listen to me. There's a whole vernacular that you can use to describe truly how you are without saying what you are not. <laughs> yeah, not bad. In fact, we had a young person come up on stage at Summerfest. How's it going, mate? How have you found Summerfest? And he said, yeah. He actually said this. He said, yeah, not bad, actually. <laughs> I thought that was a nice new dynamic to the standard answer, actually. Unfortunately, as Anzacs, what we can do is we can let the not bad attitude creep into the good news of Jesus Christ. But I want you to know that the news of Jesus Christ is not not bad, although theologically you're not wrong, because it's not bad. It's just only good. When it comes to your relationship with Jesus and the news that He brings to your life, of relationship with God right now in filling of the Holy Spirit and eternity with Him, it is more than not bad. 
It is wonderful. It is special. It is the good news. And the news of Jesus is meant to be shared and embraced by those around you. In the book of Ezekiel, it talks about the four faces of the church. The ox, the man, the lion, and the eagle. We won't go into a sermon and it's far too late in the night and it's been two camps to go into what that means. And Robert Ferguson, no doubt, is more aptly qualified to preach that sermon. But what I would say is this, what I observe of that scripture is this. The four faces of the church are always looking outwards and never inwards. It's very important that we gather. Very important that we come together. It's hugely important to lift up His Name and edify one another in our faith. But once we gather, we must leave. Once we finish, we must go out and fulfil the Great Commission and tell people the not not bad news of Jesus, but the great and the wonderful, grace-filled, mercy-loving, sharing with our neighbour, our colleague at school, in your workplace and your family, the good news of Jesus Christ. It is meant to be shared. Unfortunately, it's a mystery to us. We read books and listen to podcasts trying to figure out how we do it. We call it evangelism. Even the words seem to shutter up our spine. We're not sure how to do it. Many of us are introverts that get our energy from being alone, but you want me to share my faith? <sighs> then there's that one or two people who are, the, who are the, the flagship evangelists of the youth ministry. These young people, 10 million followers on TikTok, how do they do these amazing feats? <laughs> they bring 35 new people on a bus every week and they know them by name. And we honour them, so we should. Kids are getting saved through the influence of these young people in high schools. It's amazing. I don't know how they achieve these amazing feats, but they do. Unfortunately, what it can do is box the rest of us in who don't have those charismatic, extroverted, and dare I say, anointed skills to share the Gospel like these young people. So what do we do? We jump the fence and we have a cup of tea. Can I tell you about Chris? Before I tell you about Chris, can I tell you about myself just for a minute? I got saved at the age of 12. My friend Matt jumped the fence, invited me to church. I went to church, it was an all-nighter, which means it starts at 7 p.m., finish at 7 a.m., costs about 20 bucks. Starts off and you, know, you get together and you go and play some sports, little indoor sports, whatever. Then you go from there, you go laser strike, maybe paintballing, hit some Maccas in the middle, go for a swim. Wrap it up with a trip to the movie theatre. This one particular night, this is how I met Nadia. Her brother was the youth pastor in the church that I, was, that I attended that night. He got up to preach after the Matrix. You remember the Matrix. What an absolute classic. Remember that? Brilliant film. Neo, Morpheus, Trinity. Oh, so many biblical references, Jesus characters. Redemptive themes, oh, powerful. Finished the movie, Red Pill, Blue Pill. He gets up, oh, what a perfect storm to preach the Gospel. Kids who are tired, sleep deprived, have just watched a post-apocalyptic AI and he's using red pill, blue pill. 100% I need Jesus. I think I'm naked in a a pool of pink jelly lying next to Keanu Reeves, plugged into an AI that's using my body energy as a battery to fulfil the taking over of the world. And I can be on the side of Morpheus? 100% I'm saying yes to Jesus. (laughs) So I lift my hand and pray a very simple prayer and respond to Jesus. What was crazy is that it worked. Like I genuinely encountered God that night. My every major decision in my life has come back to that moment. Everything I've done in my life that's of any value to the world has come back to that moment. I went home, woke up the next day. Oh man, sun was warmer, grass was greener. Life was better. Now, my mum raised me single from the age of two. Five boys. My mum is an absolute weapon. Her name is Wendy. I came home, I said, hey mum, uh, crazy, had a great night at youth group and uh, I met Jesus. He's a good sort. <laughs> She's like, great, that's cool, thank you. She's never been to church. I've never been to church. No one in our family's ever been to church. I found it easier to talk about money or politics than religion to my mum. It's a bit icy, but that's okay. I was kind of trying to figure out a way that I could get my faith in her life and in the family. And I was trying to just manoeuvre my way through that, that process. Five years passed, went to university, 
started studying law, sociology, finished university with no degree but $30,000 of debt. I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. My mum was less than pleased. University wrote me a letter some years later and by the grace of God, I was able to just simply cross credit some law points across. I was able to graduate, walk across the stage. My mum was there, she was happy. Got married to Nadia, my mum loves Nadia, who doesn't? Had four kids, my mum loves those little gremlins too. But still it was hard to, to, to get my faith into her life and find a way that effectively communicated that Jesus was real and that He loved her very, very much. And then we moved to Canada and she found that very hard. But still I tried to find a way. Time would pass and I would get a text message from my friend whose name is Joel Milgate from Curate Church in Mount Maunganui, New Zealand. He said, hey, your mum, this is about three months ago. He said, hey, your mum is in church. I was like, no way. I mean, what a response from someone who's been praying for 20 years for something to finally happen. <laughs> hey man, mum's in church. There's no way, bro, nah, someone else's mum. <laughs> I said, it's probably Nadia's mum. They live in the same area in New Zealand. He goes, no, 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 it's not Nadia's mum, it's your mum. Bro, it's Wendy. I said, I need a photo, I need a photo. <laughs> Sends me a photo, he's like this. <laughs> my mum and my stepfather, whose name is Rick, in the photo, beaming. She calls me up, FaceTimes me. Hey, went to church today, changed my life. She says, you were right. I made a decision for Christ today and, and I think it's gonna impact everything that I do. And when I come to Canada in a month, I can't wait to talk to you about it. I've got so many questions. So my mum comes to Canada and I'm like, I need to know exactly how you ended up at that church that day. And she goes, oh, you know Chris? Chris and Sue from down the road. I said, no, I don't, I don't remember Chris or Sue. Tell me about Chris. She says, oh, Chris has got cancer. He's got a tumour in his neck the size of a balloon. It's terminal. He's going through chemo. Tough, tough scenario. I was like, wow, I'm praying for him. That's, that's horrific. She says, yeah, it's crazy. He jumped the fence and we had a cup of tea. And I asked him how it was going. And he said, oh, it's really scary, but my church community's rallying around me. And I know that my mortality is... It's about to come to an end, but I've got a relationship with Jesus and I believe I'm gonna live forever with Him. And she says, really? He says, yeah. She says, that's crazy. He says, yeah. In fact, I'm getting baptised this week. Do you wanna come? And she and her, my, my stepfather, Rick, both same time say, yeah, we'll be there. So they go to church that week. Then my mum gets to Canada. We have this conversation and she says to me, hey, when, now that I'm here, could you do me a favour? I said, yeah, of course, what's up? She says, while I'm here, before I go home, could you baptise me? I'm like, Mum, I'll baptise you in a bath of my happy tears. Of course I'll baptise you. <laughs> I, say, I say that to say this. I think you and I could both agree that 20 years of prayer made a difference. But Chris was the one who sealed the deal. He jumped the fence and had a cup of tea. Not all of us have 10 million followers on TikTok and have friends that we can fill a bus with every week to bring to youth. But all of us have a fence and all of us know how to brew a cup of tea. One-on-one, -on -one, authentic, real conversations about Jesus is how we are gonna change the world. Value your relationship with God. Protect your relationship with God. But it's not the not bad news of Jesus. It's the good news. And the good news of Christ needs to be shared. There are some Levi's in the room. Don't stop praying and don't stop believing for your parents and your kids and your siblings and your friends to be saved. Do not stop praying and believing that God can work miracles. There's some Chris's in the room. We're all Chris. We've all got a fence and we all know how to steep a cup of tea. But tonight there are some Wendy's in the room. That's my mum's name. And you're here because someone's been praying and someone bought you. And you're the reason why we gather. 
We're here for you. This moment is for you. You're here and you don't know much about what on earth is going on. You think God is distant and aloof, but He's not, He loves you. In fact, His name, Jesus, is the way, the truth and the life. That first word way is special because He made a way to you. Theologian once said, we can't get to God. Trying to get to God is like trying to climb to the moon, on the moon, the moon, sorry, on a rope made of sand. It's not possible to get there. So God came down. Levi's been praying. Chris has been inviting. But this moment is for you. God loves you very much. And if you're here and you're saying, I'm distant from God, I don't know Him, I'm not walking with Jesus, I would love to pray with you. Could you close your eyes right now? Every person, would you mind? Just for privacy's sake, if you're here and you're saying, I do not know Jesus, I'm not walking with Him, I do not have relationship with God, I don't know if I was to lose my life tonight where I would go. Friend, this moment is for you for certainty and assurance of your salvation. If you're not walking with God, if you don't know Jesus, then friend, I would love to pray with you tonight. The prayer is gonna be very simple. This is what we'll do. On the count of three, I'll simply just ask for you to throw your hand in the air. If you're here and you're saying, I don't know Jesus. As you lift your hand, I'll see it. I'll acknowledge it and believe that in that moment, your whole life can be changed. We'll pray a prayer together. You'll lift it, I'll acknowledge it. You'll put it down and we'll pray. If that's you on the count of three, throw your hand so I can see it. One, two, three. Lift it nice and high. Brilliant, yeah, amazing. There are hands all over the room. People are saying yes to Jesus tonight. From the front to the back and the side to the side, if you haven't yet lifted up your hand and you're saying, yes, I need Jesus in my life, I'm not right with Him, throw your hand up right now so that I can see it and lift it nice and high. Yeah, amazing. What we're gonna do right now, church, is very simple. With every hand now put down, we're all of us gonna pray together a very simple prayer that I'll lead us in. This prayer will change the lives of those who pray it and we'll all pray it out of support of those who've lifted up their hand tonight. The prayer goes like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to You. I need You in my life. I ask You, forgive me of my sin. And I thank You that You do. I thank You, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. As I hand back, can you put your hands together and lift a huge shout for every person tonight who's lifted up their hand. Come on, you could do much better than that. That sounds like a golf clap. Heaven is going crazy for even one person who gives their life to Jesus for every sinner that comes home. Come on, church, put your hands together and thank God and honour every single person tonight. You see, death could not hold you. And death could not hold you, the veil torn for you. You silenced the voice of sin and rain. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life. Big congratulations to those of you that responded to Levi's prayer for you. 
And listen, um, if you did raise your hands uh, at the end there, we want to give you a gift. It's a, it's a gift to Mark today, uh, to Mark Jan- 26th of January, where you decided to follow Jesus. When the service concludes, uh, we've still got a few things to do, but when it concludes, when you walk out, someone's going to be holding this Bible high because they want you to see them. Please walk up to them and say something like, hey, I prayed that prayer or I responded, I lifted my hand at the end there. Can, can I have one of those Bibles? They, would, they wanna start a conversation with you. They wanna gift you this. It's on behalf of our church, a beautiful New Testament Bible like this to mark the day where you decided to follow Jesus. Come on, one more time, congratulate. There were many hands in the room, many hands. I saw it, so cool. And I think while we're standing, I think we really need to appreciate Levi Mary Church. Powerful. Man, that was so good. Did you receive that? Man, you can just keep thinking about that, chewing on that, it's absolutely amazing. So thanks again. Thank you to to Levi and Nadia for being with us this week. You guys are absolutely amazing. Hey, take your seats for a quick moment. In a moment, I'm gonna pray us out and then you're more than welcome to go and pick up your kids. But look, it's still school holidays from what I understand. We are gonna let Kim Walker-Smith loose, all right? So, but I'm gonna pray for you and then I'll release the service, but then we're just gonna hand it over to Kim and then she's gonna lead us in worship. So you're more than welcome to hang around. But listen, I want to take a moment um, and receive a love offering. Um, we don't do this for everyone. We don't do this for our team. We, we do this for guests who have sacrificed time in their schedule. I know for Levi, Nadia and uh, Kim, uh, they've left family behind uh, on the other side of the world to come and be with us and serve us and uh, lead people into relationship with Jesus, into the presence of God. And we call it a love offering because it's simply a no pressure, if you would love to do so, do so. But I know if you're a young person, if you're a young adult, we've got so much to thank God for. Why not show appreciation in this and anyone else you're more than welcome to. But look, there's ways um, on this envelope here you can do it or on the app and you can follow what needs to happen there. Why not, let's come on, let's really bless um, Levi, Nadia and Kim Walker-Smith and send them out of here um, with a blessed gift. So that'd be awesome. So you can go ahead and begin to prepare and do that. Father, thank You for Levi and Nadia and, and Kim. Lord, we thank You for what they're doing in, Lord, in their part of the world, but abroad. God, they have blessed us this week. Thank you so much for the gift on, that's on their life. We pray for their family. We send them back home blessed. We uh, just believe for your protection, your provision over them. Keep taking them from strength to strength. May 2020 be a great year for them. In Jesus' Name I pray, Amen, Amen. Hosts, thank you so much. We can receive that giving. Hang around, I've been told there's cheeseburgers, I think, after this. I think that, so make sure if you're hungry, uh, but if you're hungry for the presence of the Lord, hang around as well, okay? See what I did there? See what I did there? It's cool, it's cool. We're gonna do something pretty awesome. Young people, university students, high school students, you're about to go back to school. And I know for our high school students, you're going back this week. Who goes back to school this week? You're going back to school. Who's pumped to go back to school this week? (laughs) Oh, it's awesome. Hey, you're gonna have an incredible year, but this is what we're gonna do. Young people returning back to high school, university students uh, returning. Uh, I want you guys to get up. You're gonna come down the front here. I'm gonna, we as a church are gonna send you back to school with a prayer of faith. We're gonna send you back to school with a prayer of courage. And I'm gonna ask Donna uh, Crouch, Pastor Donna Crouch, if she would come up and help us lead this prayer. But come on church, let's stand together. If you're returning to school, uh, returning to university, come down the front. We're gonna lay our hands on you and we're gonna send you back into our schools. So come on, come on, move quickly, move quickly, young people, university students, high school students, Bible college students, anyone who's a student, we're just going to fill the front. You pray for whoever you want to pray for and it's going to take them some time to get down the front here, but quickly, young people. Yeah, yeah, fill the front. Go for it, Donna. All right, this is pretty exciting moment. Where are all the high school students? Where are you guys? Okay. 
I need you guys to help me here. And university students, where are you guys? Okay, squash down. Oh, oh no, we're going back. I need to go back. And Bible college students, new and returning. Okay, I wanna hear a little bit of noise from school students and university, not just Bible. Come on, where are you? All right, so here's the deal. You're not just going back to study because God is doing a new thing and you are going back to get ready for what He has put you on this part of what, a big part of what He has put you on this earth to do. And this is our year of being people who are full of His Spirit. So we are gonna pray and I want some of our pastors and leaders to get around here. We are gonna pray that the hand of God is gonna be on you as you go into your schools, your universities, like we just heard from, Le from Levi tonight, that His Spirit is gonna be on you to reach out and share Christ, but also that His hand is gonna be on you to study, that you're gonna be the best, that you're gonna be the brightest, that you guys one day will be the Australians of the year, getting the awards and getting the prizes because God's doing a new thing and He needs you to be the Daniels and the Josephs and the Deborahs and the Esthers and the Phoebes and the greatest people like in the Bible that have ever been that are able to lead this nation. Can you say Amen? So why don't you lift your hands to Him wherever you are because His Spirit is able to be on you. Come on church, put your hands towards this generation who God has called to do things on the earth that have never been done before in ways that we have never seen. So Father God tonight, we commission every young person, every young woman, every young man to go into their high schools, to go into their universities with the hand of God and the touch of God and the fire of the Holy Spirit and the friendship of the Holy Spirit deep on the inside of them, Lord, that they would know what it is, Lord, to be students, Lord, that study, Lord, in that private place, to know how to go into a world and be in it, but not of it, to not compromise, Lord, and yet love the people around them to be salt and light in a world that's gone dark, Lord. And Lord, study and know what their passion is. And Lord, may You give them dreams. May You give them visions. May they see new ways of doing things, God, that have never been done before. And know that, Lord, You are doing a new thing and that, Lord, Your hand is on them, Lord. And You look to and fro across this earth, looking for hands and hearts and minds that are for You. And You are able to raise them up and do mighty things for mighty exploits for such a time as this. In Jesus' Name and the church said together, Amen and Amen. Come on, let's give Him praise. Thank you, Donna. Don't you love the generations and I uh, love being a part of a church that absolutely believes in the generations. So going from strength to strength, it's gonna be absolutely amazing. Hey, let me pray for us as a church, send you out of here, that you'd go for strength to strength in your week. God goes before you and then I'm gonna hand it to Kim and uh, you're more than welcome to pick up your kids or hang around and let's worship God together and encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank You, God for tonight, Lord, what a powerful night, a revival night. Lord, I pray for Your people, Lord, as they, go as they go into their week. Thank You that You go before them, You come behind them, Lord, You surround them with Your presence. May we be aware of the Holy Spirit in our lives, God. So going to workplaces, going to schools, going to universities, going to families this week, God, we thank You for it. In Jesus' Name I pray. And everyone said together, Amen, Amen. We love You, Church. We'll see You soon. Come on, let's worship.
come to seek your face so everything else can wait I'm here for you I want to just be here at your feet just be Everything else can wait I've come to seek your face So everything else can wait I'm here for you I want to just be Nothing matters more, God. There's nothing I want more. Cause nothing matters more. No. There's nothing I want more, more than you. Oh. Cause nothing matters more. Nothing matters more, no. There's nothing I want more right now in this moment, God. Stir our hunger, stir our hunger, stir our hunger for more of you, Jesus. We desire more, we desire more. striving there's no striving in your presence you are here because you love your children you are here because you love your children you pour out your spirit you pour out your love simply because you love your children there's no striving we just gotta be just gotta rest in your presence lift our hands
that you would just release a spirit of intercession. The intercession would stir up inside of us that even as we go about our day and in our week and through our lives and the different things and the tasks that we have going on, that we would feel intercession stirring up inside of us, moving us into prayer, moving us towards you, moving us into speaking out your words and your promises, declaring with faith, declaring who you are, God, speaking to the mountain and telling the mountain to be moved in Jesus' name. God, I ask that our, our days would be interrupted, would just be interrupted with your presence, with your presence being stirred up inside of us, pushing us, pushing us closer, pushing us closer to you, running into your presence, Jesus, that there would just be a heightened awareness, a heightened awareness of you there with us, there with us throughout each of our days, Jesus. A fresh outpouring of your spirit, God, because there is so much more and you're so good and loving, Father, to pour it out on us.
his portion and he is our prize drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes if grace is an ocean here of seeking see heaven is a like a sloppy wet kiss and my heart turns by the desire before we leave. Can we thank Kim Walker Smith for being with us? Hillsong Church, are you ready to go out with one praise song, dancing the night away? Come on, are you ready? You can lead it. From the famous to the faceless, from the past. 